so we are uh, we are kicking off our second module of Java objects. So uh, let's let's do some collective review. You don't need your computers; you just need your brains. Tell me about objects. We call object Java object oriented. Why? Take me through the donuts. Java is object oriented. Abbreviated OO. So what objects did we make last time? We worked on last week. We made a donut object. Now we didn't make donut objects just to be silly. We made donut objects because donuts are simple. They have very simple qualities that aren't complicated for us to understand. And we think about Java as object oriented because we can make this thing, this donut object. How did we make the donut object? We had to first write a what kind of class? This is the Chipotle example. How many floor layouts are there for Chipotle restaurants? One one per. Yeah, we're going to say that they're, you know, they're kind of cookie cutter. They all have these same components. They have a place to order, they have a sit down place, they have a parking lot out front. So in order to make all those restaurants, we say they used a what to make a whole bunch? Yeah, a blueprint. So we think about writing classes as blueprint classes or who uses a blueprint class? That business term. Lawyers have architects. Some, lawyer, some rich lawyers have architects, but all lawyers have contract assistants. Laws to follow. <laughs> or not. Uh, laws, laws. Clients, they have clients, remember. Clients use lawyers to help fix legal problems. We have clients of classes, so we made our donut class, but if we just have the donut class sitting there hanging out, does it do anything? No. Does it do anything? It's just sitting there. What member variables did we have in our donut? We had, you all gave your donuts a name, and we, they all had what? So in other words, we made an object that knows something about itself. It knows how much of itself is left. And how did we uh, eat the donut? We did what? Every object has member variables and, so these are things that the object knows, and methods have things that they do. Do, yes, and those are called? What are the little chunks of code with the name to do stuff? Blocks. You know this. We program them every week. Pardon? I think you just set it too. Maybe. Starts with an M. Every class only has two things, member variables and methods. methods. Yeah, like main, except is there a main in a blueprint class? No. No, it's not a program. It's a container for data about some thing. Okay? So we had uh, simulate eating, remember that? where we passed in what as the input? An int that was the percent that we wanted to simulate eating. So we made this blueprint. So here's a blueprint. Uh, blueprint. Blueprint. And then how did we turn the blueprint into an actual donut object in RAM? What magic keyword? Three letters, very short, small but mighty. What's the question? What is the keyword that turns a blueprint into an object? There. I heard it from the back row. There. New. He had his mouth covered. He was being very sneaky. New, right? I want a brand new donut. So that instructs the compiler. This is not just some silly word. This word does the whole thing. It says, hey, compiler, take this blueprint, go get all the tools you need, make me a donut object, and on that donut object, put what? Yeah, go through the blueprint. Just like someone that builds a Chipotle, the, the architect makes the plan, they give it to the builders, and they say, okay, we need a parking lot, build a parking lot. We need a kitchen, build a kitchen. We need a line for people to wait in to get their food. That's what's going on here. Every donut object needs a what type variable? What would we store name in? Strings. 
What else? What's the other member variable? It's an int. It's an int, and it's called? First remaining. Yeah, first remaining. Now, what's interesting about these? Do these have a value when we make these donuts? Are there any values put on these? No, they're empty. In other words, it's like the Chipotle situation. You make the kitchen, but each Chipotle has different food that goes in it. Right? It has a different zip code, different address. In other words, every time we say new, if we use the second new keyword, what do we get? If you have one blueprint, but we would get a? Another object. Another object. Now, this object, so the first donut we named was Chloe, and the percent remaining started at 100. We, we loaded those up. And then every time we make another object, it gets what? Another copy of the same member variables. In other words, we are making these containers for data. So if you were running a kitchen or a junk food place to eat yummy food, Grant's here. Happy probably birthday. no one's singing. It is a You're not playing that game. Well, I put it on Facebook. The internet the told us all. You can't hide it. Well, I have to put a birthday down on April 23rd. It's I have not to put actually a birthday. birthday. So are you 20 or 21? No, he's saying it's not his birthday. It's his birthday. He lied. Are you sure? Pause. That's a really good point. You're 20. You're 20. Wait, you told me what your birthday How do you find out? Wait, it is or is not your real birthday? So it is. Where's the cake? Don't trust the Zuckerberg. Where's the cake? Where's the cake? <laughs> you never know. He's switching up all those birthdays. I like the haircut. Okay, this is cool. So when we say that ob Java is object-oriented, the reason this is cool is because I now have an object that's called something that I designed, it has a structure that I created, and I can use it to contain and collect all the information I need about a donut object. And this could go, you know, in Java we model all sorts of things. So if you were running an HR department, you might have an object called person with their name, Maybe their social security number, Denver. maybe their position, DOB. DOB, see that? So we can design these containers, and then all I need to do is refer to this object using our special what types of variables. Remember how these are strings and ints? But in order to get to my donut, what do I need? Blueprint. No, I use my blueprint, I made the object, and then how do I get to that object? This is the craziest thing about Java. The object, the class has created a new type. It's a custom type. And in order to get to this object, I need a variable. We call them handle variables because they get us a handle to the object. Dot. It's type what? Chris mouthed it to me. You didn't look at it. How do we store references to donut objects? Can we store a reference to a donut object in an int? No. Is the donut an int? No. Is it a string? It's not a string. It has a string in it for name. It's what? Variable type. It is. We're trying to figure out what the variable type is for our handle variable or our pointer variable. Let's pull that up so you know what I'm talking about. Ooh, I heard it. There it was. Donut. Um, so here's my big, my nice design. Where's my... here. So remember this puppy? Ooh, I have to record. I'm going to forget. Okay. So remember, we make this. This is cool. First donut is type what? Lexi said it. What's the, we're in this side of the room. The type is donut. We are making variables of the type we created, which is crazy because it gives us tons of flexibility. So this was our handle variable that only stores references the donuts, because donuts live on the heap, the pointers live in another thing called the stack, and it allows us to get from first donut down to the particular instance of the donut we made. Okay? Basic object stuff.